the summer of 2024, we bike packed, or do I say dog packed, southbound along the Great Divide mountain bike route, going border to border, from the border of Canada to the border of Mexico. This video is a comprehensive review highlighting the bikes, bags, clothing, and gear we used on this trip. My hope is that this information may be helpful to future riders, as well as myself. Oh, and stay tuned toward the end of this video as I'll include some bonus material including what gear broke on the trip, what gear and items did we end up sitting home halfway through our trip, as well as initial thoughts on what we would do differently next time. So, forgot to mention, but um, please submit any questions or comments down below. So I'm gonna to try to do a YouTube live uh, after we release our first video, days one through three. Um, so as I'm putting all this information out there right now for you on all this gear, um, and I'm not hitting something, ask a question and we'll include that in our live video in the future. Of course, you can also ask the question live as well. Um, yeah, I want to do this really quick after we get home before we forget everything for our own reference and for however else this might help other people. Alright, it's a couple days since getting home um, and I want to um, document um, post-ride gear review for the GDMBR while it's still fresh in my mind, um, and also so then I can put away all this stuff. Um, had a couple days to, to be sad and transition back to home, and I feel ready to film again. So, here we go. How best to do this? I think maybe to assemble the bike like I was about to ride for the day, and then we'll just take it apart bit by bit. All right, here we go. going to take a little bit so through the power of and the magic of YouTube we will fast forward this and voila. oh my sad front tire at least I'm not broken The bike I rode for the Divide was my Y-Cycles El Jefe hardtail with front suspension in a titanium frame. She was lightweight and playful, yet displayed confidence-inspiring durability in handling a fully loaded downhill day on extra rocky terrain. She held up great on the Divide. For my drivetrain, I had a 1x12 SRAM Eagle transmission. I never felt like I needed more gears. Although, to be fair, on many a climb, I did always reach for the gear shifter just to see if there was one more. I ran a SRAM brake set with pads being replaced only once in Salida, Colorado at Absolute Bikes. Awesome bike shop and crew, by the way. For my saddle, I was taking the concern of saddle sores very seriously going into this ride, and so I went with my women's Ergon saddle, something I had immediately upgraded my bike with after my very painful run of the Oregon Outback Trail a few years ago. No problems on this ride. Tires were a pair of Vittoria Mezcals, tubeless with an added liner to the rear wheel. They both ran amazing and didn't need to be replaced at all on the trip. The sad fate of my front wheel is another video altogether. Stay tuned for future episodes of our daily rides on the GDMBR and for the full story there. Spoiler alert, it's a doozy. Flat bars or drop bars? I swapped out my original handlebar set with a millhouse bar a couple of weeks prior to starting the divide after doing a custom bike fit at a local bike shop, where it was determined through fancy use of lasers that I was reaching too low and too far away. 
After much research, I upgraded to the Millhouse Flat Bar. I loved the new fit, and also that my handlebar was named after a Simpsons character. For hand positions, after much consideration, I opted to skip on adding aero bars to my ride and went only with Ergon grips, with added Ergon bar end grips. Additionally, my hands had this added alternate position with these grips from SQ Labs. Lastly, for pedals, I went with clipless and flats with this clever pedal set from G-Wage. Red in color, helping me to pedal faster, obviously. The option to clip in and really get a good efficient pedal stroke for the uphills and the stretches of pavement miles was perfect. However, for some of the more gnarly descents, I enjoyed the peace of mind riding on flats, knowing that I could quickly put my foot down on the ground if needed. Stay tuned for later in the video for the riding shoes I paired with these pedals. Here is a quick overview of the bags I used for the ride. Later in the video, I'll unpack each bag and share what's on the insides. I went with a custom frame bag from Dispersed Bikepacking, made with solar power and love. It had deep pockets and these two side zippers that I never ever broke. And trust me, I can break a zipper. Well done dispersed. Two Salsa Anything cage bags were attached to my front forks using tail fin suspension fork mounts. Additionally, and not seen here as they did not survive the 2700 miles of bouncing, were two Arundel Looney Bin adjustable bottle cages, followed by one additional regular bottle cage mount here. I carried two Ortlieb waterproof 20 liter yellow for safety panniers along with this Sea to Summit waterproof 35 liter Big River dry bag, which I fondly referred to as the Big Kahuna. Underneath all those bags was my trusty Old Man Mountain pannier rack holding on to all that gear for all those rough miles. A true workhorse. For the front of the bike, I used a Bedrock Bags front roll with added extra pouch. This was a last minute addition to my setup thanks to a Facebook Marketplace find. A Revelate Designs top tube bag, accompanied by two Revelate Designs feed bags, were my cockpit bags full of fun goodies all day long to keep me going. Lastly, this lightweight running Nathan backpack rounded out my bag collection for this trip. Occasionally it would be attached haphazardly like this on top of the big kahuna, or on lighter days it would be folded up and packed tight when not in use, buried deep in one of my panniers. It made for a great town day bag when I would often be on foot. But whenever possible, I tried to not wear it on my back while riding, just to keep additional weight off my back, and more importantly, sit bones. Clothing. I'll review everything I packed and wore during the day, and then everything I packed and wore in the evening. A note on clothing. Preparing for a trip like the GDMBR, where all sorts of weather will present itself, is tricky. Bikepacking is all a lesson in balance of comfort and staying lightweight. I recommend exposing yourself to all types of weather conditions prior to going on a trip like this so you can experiment with what works best for you. But, for what it's worth, here is what I brought. This is a snapshot of everything I wore during the day while riding, with one set of alternate shirt, bra, socks, and underwear. If you're thinking, that's not a lot, you're correct. 
The GDMBR is nothing if not a lesson in minimalism and simplicity and doing laundry as often as possible. I had two shirts to write in. This fox racing shirt I tended to grab for hotter days and would always pair it with my pearl Izumi sun sleeves, SPF 50. Or on some of our night riding or cooler days, I'd opt for my black diamond helmet compatible sun hoodie. This shirt was also my go-to for the really hot and sun exposed days where we wouldn't see a tree for days. Just for the extra sun protection it provided with the hood. I would alternate my days between my two Nike sports bras. I had one chamois to ride in from Club Ride and I would alternate between two pairs of Patagonia lightweight underwear. And I had this one pair of Patagonia Dirt Roamer bike shorts I layered on top of my chamois. My left pocket would slowly fill with wrappers from the food I ate during the day, and I appreciated the zippers. I had two pairs of socks, this crew cut pair of Darn Tough for the hot days, and these warmer pair of Smart Wool socks for the cooler days. I loved the biking fox on these socks, and the brand name Darn Tough on the others. Both socks helped me channel a darn tough mindset going into each day as I pulled them on. I spent a long time looking for the right pair of shoes to take on this trip and was pleased when I found these Fox Union clipless shoes. I needed a pair that could handle my flat and clipless pedal setup, be rigid yet flexible for both long hours spinning or hiking my bike up the numerous hike-a-bike sections, as well as provide zero time retying my shoes throughout the day. And these fit the bill perfectly. I ordered in one size up from my regular shoe size to account for potential swelling, and I'm pleased to report I had zero Achilles issues due to hiking in cycling shoes, was able to ride clipless and flats as needed throughout the day, and I didn't have to stop pedaling to tie my shoes once. The finishing pieces to my daily riding clothing included this neck buff when not wearing my hooded t-shirt, fingerless riding gloves from Fox, my bell helmet, and lastly, my Smith polarized sunglasses, or sunnies. When we would arrive to camp, one of the first things I would do was change out of my riding clothes into my camp clothes, which included the following. This lightweight cycling mesh shirt I found at an outdoor secondhand store just before our trip, or my alternate warmer camp shirt option was this super warm and cozy Patagonia long sleeve thermal layer. On extra cool nights, or as added protection from the bugs, I'd add this Patagonia lightweight puffy to my layers. I also had this lightweight bra from Patagonia as a part of my sleep kit. For my bottom half, camp clothes consisted of either my pair of lightweight Patagonia running shorts or this warm and cozy thermal layer from Vado, donated to me from Aaron's side of the closet prior to our departure. Camp shoes were these simple sandals from Zero. It always felt so good to kick off my riding shoes after five to 10 hours and slip into these each night. I did pack and wear one pair of smart wool socks for sleeping in on the colder nights, which I did wear frequently, especially on the northern part of the road. Unfortunately, I accidentally left them behind under the sheets at the Mellow Moon Hotel in Del Norte. Luckily, the New Mexico section of the trail didn't require wool sleeping socks, so I was fine. Amazing hotel, by the way. I give it my best of the trail award. Oh, and how could I forget to include my rain gear? I mean, bug gear? Many nights at camp included me wearing my full rain kit for added bug protection, which included this lightweight wind coat from Patagonia and rain pants, also from Patagonia. Lastly, here are final bits and pieces of articles of clothing I packed and used frequently throughout the trip as needed. My heavy-duty raincoat that I would wear when my lightweight Patagonia wind jacket wasn't enough. Uncertain as to the brand of this jacket, 
as all the logos have worn out, but I'm fairly certain it's a Novara from REI that's been in my kit for over 10 years. One of the last things I was hemming and hawing about before our departure for this trip was if I should spring for an upgraded rain jacket from Pock, Sports, or Showers Pass. But luckily, this one held strong and did the trick. A note to newer riders on rain jackets. Rain jackets are not really about keeping you 100% dry. It's more about having a good outer shell paired with some awesome base layers as needed, and then moving your body to stay warm. Luckily for me, being from the rainy Pacific Northwest, I have pedaled many a mile in the pouring rain in this exact jacket and felt quite at home with the rain at the start of the ride this year. Other bits of clothing gear included this additional rain hood from Showers Pass because my rain jacket doesn't have a hood, didn't end up using it, a pair of Gore-Tex waterproof rain mittens. Did use these on the rainy cold descents over these warm gloves from Black Diamond. And I was prepared to add hand heaters if my fingers got really numb, which they never did. Additionally, I packed a pair of latex gloves, which Aaron swears by as a warmth measure if needed. Never used. A pair of NRS rain over socks meant for water sports did use on the rainy cold days. My Carhartt fleece lined ski mask I was prepared to use for additional warmth. Never used but always glad I had in case. Smart wool beanie for additional warmth sleeping at night. Did use and also used riding during the day early in the trip a few times. Lastly, my Alpha flash jacket from Rab scored on the clearance rack at a local outdoor shop prior to our departure provided excellent mid-layer warmth layered over my riding shirts and underneath my wind or rain jacket. Okay, now we're gonna go over what's inside each bag. Different day, tires in the shop getting fixed. Ah, bike packing. As the name implies, the activity is one part biking and one part packing. Stay tuned for future videos on the fun biking part of the equation, but for now, here is the packing part and what was inside each of my bags. I'll unpack each bag going from front to back of my bike, highlighting the different gear I used from my sleep system to my cook system, water system, electronic system, and more. Inside the right side of my dispersed frame bag was my 4 liter capacity water bladder from Hydropack, which was connected to my water hose always at the ready on my cockpit for easy hands-free hydration throughout the day. The only other thing I kept on this side of the bag was my trail souvenirs to give to friends, three small rocks, one from the Canadian border, one from the top of Indiana Pass in Colorado, the highest point of the divide, and Never picked up one from the Mexico border. I'm coming back for you, buddy. Inside the left side of my frame bag was the American Cycling Association's paper map of the current segment of trail we were on for my reference if needed. A small Ziploc baggie with my well-used chain towel. My wilderness bathroom kit, which included toilet paper, my prairie dog trowel, and a pair of gloves. Only used twice on the entire trail. Two ever new water storage bladders, one 30 ounce and one 67 ounce. My Sea to Summit collapsible water bucket for easy scooping up of water from the streams and then pouring into the ever new water bladders before finally filtering into my hydration pack. Inside my bedrock bag's front roll at the ready was my Patagonia lightweight wind and rain jacket followed by my Navarro Heavy Duty Rain Jacket,
followed by my Patagonia rain bug camp pants. Followed by my Rab mid layer. Followed by my Smart Wool Beanie. My never used Carhartt fleece lined ski mask. My never used Showers Pass rain hood. followed by my NRS wet socks. Attached to the front of this bag was my temperature gauge and my hydration hose attached by a strong magnet. Inside the extra pouch attached to my front roll were my warm black diamond gloves, my REI Gore-Tex waterproof gloves, my latex emergency warm gloves. Let's see what else. Oh, my coast flashlight with clip, which mounted very well to my helmet and worked as my headlight for dark night riding. Here is my safety bleaking red light from Blackburn. My action camera tripod with iPhone attachment. My camp headlamp from Nightcore. My write in the rain notebook, ballpoint pen, and write in the rain pen. I often wrote short thank you notes to trail angels in here and would tear them out and give them to the angels. Lastly, I kept my package of hand heaters here, and speaking of trail angels, one early on in the trip gave me three extra hand warmers for just in case as we were pedaling into a winter storm warning. Clearly, I didn't use one hand warmer along the route, but I carried them the whole way. My left salsa anything bag often had extra snacks that didn't fit into my feed bags. Here I had pretzels, some smashed Cheez-Its, and some gummy peach rings. Ah, the diet of a champion. Underneath that was the main purpose of my fork-mounted bags, carrying Rowdy's food. Remember, I mentioned we dog-packed the GDMBR. Aaron carried Rowdy as seen here, and I carried Rowdy's food. Bargain deal. Lastly, this paint spatula rounded out the contents of my left salsa bag a must-need item for anyone writing the divide. My right salsa anything bag carried the other half of the weight of Rowdy's food. My Revelate Designs top tube bag carried my wallet, my action camera extra batteries, a spare pen, and a handful of Jolly Ranchers that I learned really helped with my parched mouth in the dry heat section of New Mexico.
My Revelate Designs feed bags were one of my favorite bags carrying all the goods. The contents varied day by day, and I often didn't consume everything seen here, but always packed lots of items with as much variety as possible, and on this last day I was carrying one, two, three fig bars, one pro meal granola bar, one set of block energy cubes, the two times the sodium kind, a half-eaten pack of Honey Stinger caffeinated shoes, oh, an extra set of block energy cubes, and some emergency electrolyte mix. The side pockets carried my knife, an extra lighter wrapped in duct tape for repairs if needed, of course Rowdy's 4th of July bow tie, as you do, a hand sanitizer, my Blistex lip balm SPF 15, More electrolyte mix from Tailwind. I refer to this particular one as my Go Juice. Another electrolyte mix packet from Liquid IV. Ma Eaton Spoon. Sunscreen. A camera attachment, extra sunscreen, chamois butter, cassette chain ring cleaning tool, chain oil, and more electrolyte mix. Also, very important, not pictured here, but my can of bear spray lived in my right feed bag, or with me in the tent, or in my hand at all times, from the start of our trip all the way to Pinedale, Wyoming, where I donated it to a northbound rider. And now for the back of the bike. Aw oh, man, that rig just does not look lightweight at all. And it really wasn't. But everything packed in there was essential to me. Let's unpack it and see what I was carrying. My camp shoes were always packed to the outside like this. My backpack was often empty and tucked deep into one of the yellow panniers, but for the last leg of the route through New Mexico, I found I needed the extra carrying capacity that this little extra bag provided. Let's see what I was carrying inside. On the outside zipper was my toothpaste and toothbrush. Now what are those doing there? Well, toward the end of the route, we were getting up super early in the morning, 3, sometimes 2 a.m. to beat the heat, and so I'd often find myself doing my oral hygiene on the trail after pedaling for three to four hours, and I needed those items easily accessible. I also carried my passport and Rowdy's medical documentation in here. In the main compartment, I was carrying an extra Ziploc bag of pretzels, my second Arundel front fork water bottle cage that had fallen off my bike a day south of Pie Town. My first fork mounted water bottle cage fell off much earlier in Idaho. And my two collapsible water bottles from Solomon for extra water capacity for the long water carries in the dry stretches of trail in New Mexico.
Inside my Sea to Summit Big River dry bag, I carried my sleep kit, which included my Patagonia Puffy, my Patagonia Long Sleeve Thermal, thermal leggings, Patagonia sleeping bra, Patagonia running shorts, cycle top, My bivy from Catabatic Gear. My women's Etherlite XT air mattress from Sea to Summit. My pillow from Sea to Summit. my 20 degree down filled sleeping quilt from Enlightened Equipment and my 40 degree synthetic sleeping quilt from Enlightened Equipment. Two sleeping bags? Yes! I know myself and I knew I'd need both and I was correct. For the warmer nights I'd just use my 40 degree synthetic bag and for the colder nights I'd just use my 20 degree down bag but for the colder colder nights I'd layer them both for supreme warmth and more nights than not, I'd fall asleep with both layers wrapped around me. Oh, and last but not least, one of my favorite pieces of gear from the trip, this USB rechargeable air mattress inflator from Flextail. This little mighty guy would blow up my air mattress each night in one minute or less with just a click of a button, instead of exhausted me from the day huffing and puffing and getting lightheaded. My right Ortlia pannier contained the following my Columbia double walled water bottle, rehomed to this location when my fork mounted Arundel water bottle cage broke in Idaho. But I will say though, double walled insulated water bottle was a great choice. The ice I would fill up on at the soda stations at the convenience stores, and it stayed icy all day and made my Gatorade taste so delicious when out on the hot, hot trail. Okay, bike packers, here's where it gets really fun. Inside my pannier bag was another bag. This one contained all my toiletries. This bag we'll unpack in a bit. Oh, I know, good stuff, right? Hit pause and go grab some popcorn and come back. There's so much to unpack. The next bag within a bag was this one, which was mostly supplements and rowdy medication. We'll fully unpack it in a bit. The next bag within a bag my electronics dry bag from Sea to Summit. We'll unpack this later. I kept my spare pair of underwear and socks here along with my extra bra and riding shirt. My extra bike parts bag was kept in my pannier bag. We'll go over the contents of this bag in a bit. My action camera handlebar mount broke in the early part of New Mexico, so its bits and pieces lived at the bottom of this pannier. I carried two extra straps from Old Man Mountain as an added precaution if ever needed, and they just stayed at the bottom of this bag. Lastly, we picked up a good water bottle cleaning brush halfway through our ride and I carried it in an open pocket here. My left Ortlia pannier contained the following. My other Columbia double walled water bottle rehomed to this location when my fork mounted Arundel water bottle cage broke in New Mexico. 
And another bag within a bag, my 20 liter Sea to Summit dry bag that was full of my cook kit and food. We'll further unpack this bag shortly. Oh, and lastly, a piece of trace I found at one of our last campsites we stayed at. A bread wrapper twisty tie that was left on a picnic table that now lives where it belongs in the trash. Okay, we'll go over what's in the bike kit, go over the toiletry kit, go over that extra baggie with the toiletries, we'll go over the electronics system, we'll go over my food and cook kit system, and then we'll dive deeper the water system we used. Carried spare tube with zip ties. This is real unedited and uncut, you can tell. Carried a bag within the bag. Carried some tire levers. multi-tool, Crank Brothers, it's pretty heavy. Mm. Not sure what that little doodad is. These were, I think, extra brake pads. more things in his kit, like bacon strips, tire plugs. Here are bags, within bags, within bags. Like packing. One half biking, one half packing. This was always a really heavy bag. Whenever I would move it around in my panniers, I was like, man, if I didn't have to carry that, I mean, that's a lot of weight. But necessary. Next is the toiletry kits. Start with this one first. My toiletry kit included a razor for the occasional times I would shave and make my legs feel like bottlenose dolphins. chamois butter, which I applied every morning of the ride. This REI brand lightweight towel. 
These wilderness wipes were a part of my evening hygiene routine of keeping as clean as possible my sit bone area to help prevent saddle sores. After using the wilderness wipes, I'd always follow with applying some of this pretty yucky smelling stuff on top as an added layer of protection against saddle sores getting angry. This wilderness wash doubled as body wash and dish soap. A bottle of shampoo and body wash. A set of aqua tabs as a backup to purifying our water if our water filter failed. A backup toothbrush in case my other one broke. These bottle cleaners for helping to keep our water bottles clean and disinfected. And lastly, this washcloth from Pack Towel. This bag is actually a reusable produce bag from my real life. It doubled wonderfully as my see-through mesh toiletry bag. This extra Ziploc contained my waterproof pill container, which held my daily morning supplements of vitamin D and fish oil, and our evening vitamin I, ibuprofen. A month before we started this trip, we began taking two of these Osteobiflex joint health supplements a day and then continue to take two a day while on the trail. Rowdy's monthly heartworm med and fleas, ticks, and lice preventative were also kept here. We also packed our laundry detergent for the entire trip with these eco-friendly and ultralight laundry sheets from Earthbreeze. We love these back at home, but also they were fantastic on trail. My electronics kit was stored in this small Sea to Summit dry bag and included the following. These electronic cleaning wipes, along with some eyeglass cleaning wipes, which proved very useful for cleaning the muck off my sunnies throughout the trip. This USB charger from Anchor that I would use to efficiently charge all my devices in the evenings at the hotels and cabins along the way. I relied on this Nightcore energy brick to charge my devices in the evenings when I was camping. All the cords to charge my devices lived here. My iPhone cord, which charged my iPhone 13 Pro Max. My iPhone was protected by an everyday case from Peak Designs. I love the magnetic in-cut square in the back of this case, which seamlessly attaches magnetically to the various Peak Designs attachments. My phone mostly lived on my handlebar with this attachment but could easily be removed from the magnet with a small push of a button and placed on my tripod attachment from Peak Designs. My Koros GPS watch cord, which charged my Koros Apex watch. I've had this since December of 2021, and it's a beast. The battery life is what I love most about it, lasting all day in activity mode for numerous days on end proving perfect for long distance days in the backcountry. I reference this often throughout the days, tracking how many more miles to the summit, to the next town, to camp. It was also answer my pleading questions on how much elevation I'd climbed so far for the day and how many hours we'd been in the saddle. Probably my most useful gadget. Well done, Rowdy. Good job. The cord to charge my action camera, the action camera batteries, my Blackburn red flashy safety blinky light, and my Nikkor headlamp. Lastly, the cord to charge my Coast headlamp.
My electronics bag also held my SD cards from my action camera in this Bauer waterproof container. Okay friends, let's see a sample of what I was packing for my food and cook kit from the last couple of days on trail in New Mexico. Ooh, this is fun. It's sort of like a time capsule. Ta-da! Bit overwhelming, isn't it? I had to dump this bag out like this every morning on a camp picnic table, on the ground, or on a hotel bed, depending upon where we were, and I would sort through, grabbing the various items I knew I'd want during the day stashed in my feed bags. In the evenings, after riding, I'd first put on my camp clothes, and then immediately dig in here to find a dinner and a protein recovery drink. Let's unpack this to show all the items I was packing out of Silver City, New Mexico. To start, at the bottom was always this paracord to hang my food bag when camping in bear country, and there wasn't a bear bin. We only used this twice when we wild camped in bear country, and I didn't sleep much of a wink either night. All other nights in bear country, we were either in a hotel or a cabin or camped at established campgrounds which always had a bear box. Next layer in my food bag was a stash of sandwich-sized Ziploc baggies always proved useful to have on hand for various purposes, followed by the larger size Ziploc baggies, mostly used for storing my trash, like here. Next layer was usually my dinners, which consisted of the bougie freeze-dried backpacker meals on fancy nights, or more often this combo was a favorite of mine. This recovery mix from Tailwind was a perfect combination of protein, carbs, fat, and electrolytes, and I tried to drink some at camp often. I tried really hard to ignore the cancer warning on the back. Does anyone else freak out about these warnings besides me? Am I being too paranoid? Next layer was my breakfasts, which was usually either a bar, a packed out bagel and cream cheese, or oatmeal. Toward the end of the trail, I found these protein-packed Kodiak oatmeals at the Walmart in Grants, New Mexico. Pretty good. I packed way too much instant coffee, as you can see. I guess you pack your fears, and I was afraid I was going to run out of coffee. <laughs> Many mornings, though, I skipped my beloved coffee just due to time or wanting to preserve my water supply. But when I did go for coffee, these mint-flavored hot cocoa packs made that coffee taste extra amazing. Day snacks included items like these granola bars, energy blocks from Cliff, which I preferred over the goose simply due to ease of consumption while on the bike. I alternated between the extra sodium ones for the extra sweaty days and the caffeine infused ones for the days I missed my morning coffee. Electrolytes I used while on the bike during the day included a Gatorade or Powerade picked up from the convenience store a lot of noon or my go juice from Tailwind or these liquid IV ones that was all that was available at my last big town resupply in Grants, New Mexico. Let's see, extra Jolly Ranchers from the large bag of them I purchased in New Mexico. The rest of these lived on demand in my feed bags. These honey packets were donated to me from Aaron from his resupply in Grants, New Mexico. Never used them myself, but I thought they'd make a great alternative to the energy chews just to mix things up, or as a spicy addition to my morning oatmeals. Lastly, I kept a bag of some of these towelettes just so I could clean up a bit before dinner in the evenings. I was such a dirt bag out there. And now for my cook kit. I had an Eaton bowl, along with my spoon, which always lived on demand in my feed bag. A fuel canister. This one was larger than the smaller sized ones I preferred and used for the first part of the trip, but this was all that I could find in Abiq, New Mexico. And my cook pot and stove. My cook pot and stove included this bandana, helpful for many reasons. My titanium cook pot for boiling water. my lighter, my ultralight burner from BRS Outdoors,
and this windshield to help with fuel efficiency. In hindsight, the BRS probably wasn't the most ideal choice for the high elevations, colder temperatures, wind, and long stretches of time I was out there. But it did the trick. And finally, a quick review on my water system. I carried three main water bottles. This 14 milliliter Nalgene was attached to the bottom of my bike here. These stainless steel double-walled Columbia bottles were attached to my front forks, that is until the bottle cages broke and then they lived smushed in my panniers. These 500 milliliter soft flasks from Hydropack stayed empty and packed away for the majority of the trip, but became my extra water carrying capacity vessels when riding through some of the drier stretches of the route. And lastly, this 4 liter capacity water bladder from Hydropack lived in my frame bag. Most days it was 3 quarters of the way filled. Whenever possible, I preferred biking with the extra weight during the day versus packing less water but having to stop to filter water throughout the day. And speaking of filtering water, whenever possible, I'd prefer to do it at camp when done riding for the day. I'd use my collapsible bucket from Sea to Summit to scoop the water and then walk over to camp and hang it from a tree and filter as needed. Bam! Water on demand! At camp, I'd pour the water from the collapsible bucket into my Evernew water storage bladders and then from there I'd attach our water filter device to the Evernew bladders and filter into my bottles. We started our trip with quick draw filters from Platypus, but stay tuned in the future videos for why we switched over to the Sawyer Squeeze as our water filter. And don't forget, I also had a set of AquaTab as extra water purification if needed. And finally, a quick blurb on what gear I started out with but ended up mailing home to myself. I thought I'd do a lot more journaling than I actually did. My other thermal pants were plenty enough. These felt redundant and bulkier. I just didn't end up wearing a hat when at camp or in town. My bear spray fit just fine in one of my feed bags and this felt extra and unnecessary. My air mattress seemed protected enough, rolled up into my Sea to Summit dry bag, and plus it was an extra step each day to smush my air mattress into this. My tripod seemed sufficient. Not really sure why I packed this to begin with since I already had my night riding headlamp. Ooh, be sure to follow the adventure to see why these got sent back. My other Anchor USB charger was enough. This was redundant. I could never get this on my sunnies correctly. I did long for a way, though, to see the traffic on the highways behind me especially on the many roads with no bike shoulder. Again, not sure why I packed this to begin with. I didn't listen to any books, podcasts, and very, very little music on the trail. One song a day, jammed on my phone's speakerphone. And that about covers it. My bike, bags, clothing, and gear I used for my 2024 ride of the Great Divide mountain bike route. Remember, there's a full gear list with links in the description box below. Interested in Aaron's full gear list? Yes, should be. He's such a gear nut. If so, please give him some encouragement to let me film him by smashing that like button, asking nicely, or demanding it in the comments section below. 
and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when that video is dropped. Please include anything you'd like covered in his potential bike and gear video. Personally, I'd like to cover the navigation system he used, the full sleep system set up with tent, the water system and filter we used, including what failed. Oh, there's gonna be a doozy in that one. And lastly, everyone's favorite, the dog packing side of things and everything he learned there. Help me in my campaign to film Aaron's setup. Hit those likes, or depending upon when you're watching this video and the outcome of our campaign, head on over to that video next. Any other questions, please feel free to ask them below in the comment section and we'll work hard to answer them in regular live stream Q&A video events with Rowdy, Aaron, and I. And also hop on board over to day one of the GDMBR series, releasing early September 2024, and let's ride. Until next time, happy trails friends, and remember, life's a journey, so ride on.